Dragon Weaponry has always had a reputation for being incredibly powerful gear due to their special attacks as well as their great stats for an affordable price. The Dragon Dagger had a chance to roll massive damage for a low spec cost, and the Dragon Scimitar was the go-to budget slash weapon before upgrading to the whip, and the list goes on. When EOC released, it completely stripped Dragon Weapons of their identity by removing weapon special attacks, and instead they just became your run-of-the-mill tier 60 weapons with generic stats. Jagex later introduced weapon special attacks, but they weren't quite the same. Swapping from a tier 80 weapon to do a special attack with a tier 60 weapon didn't have nearly as much of a use in bossing as it used to back in 2011. That is, until they released the Essence of Finality, which stores the weapon special of any weapon you place inside of it, allowing you to cast a special attack with your highest tier gear. Even still, melee has had very limiting options compared to ranged and mage. The weapon specs just weren't there either due to high adrenaline cost or low damage output. The best one to date has been the tier 95 sword, the EZK, which costs over 1 billion RSGP. I'm not sure about you, but I feel like a lot of players aren't able to afford that or don't feel like spending that much money on a single weapon. Then you have the Stadius Warhammer, which is used in only a few scenarios, and then the Dragon Claws, which is a good adrenaline dump, but we all know that melee doesn't really have much adrenaline to play with. As of yesterday's update, we finally have affordable and incredibly strong options for melee EOF specs, bringing a lot of versatility to your EOF loadouts and bringing back the identity to the dragon weaponry. I'm Rayo, and let's get into it. Before we get started, make sure to check the video description for links to my Twitch and my Discord channel where you can get notified of any new video releases, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to do a quick video going over the dragon weapon spec updates because I love melee and this is something that definitely piqued my interest and I had a few requests on it. So let's start off with some of the weapons that I don't really have footage for because I didn't really think it needed footage. The Dragon Hatchet is something that has always had a similar effect to the Stadius Warhammer except now it is a viable budget option. Essentially what it does is it makes you more accurate against your target by raising its affinity values. Basically the higher your target's affinity value to a style the more accurate that style is against that target. The Dragon Hatchet, Steadius Warhammer, and I believe the Barrel Chest Anchor all have an effect similar to this. The Dragon Hatchet has never really been viable because it used to cost 100% adrenaline except now it is 30. So this is a good budget option because it doesn't cost over or near 100 mil like the Sadius Warhammer does. Another thing that's beneficial to note about this is that it applies the affinity bonus to your target. So that means if you're with a group, all of the members of your group will benefit from that extra hit chance. The Dragon Scimitar has a similar effect for a little bit less adrenaline, and it doesn't raise the affinity values, but it raises your personal hit chance by 25% with slash attacks, specifically slash attacks. So this only works with melee and within melee only slash attacks. If you're using the Abyssal Scourge, the tier 95 Lang, or tier 85 Langs, Dragor Longswords, etc., anything that has slash as the weapon style type will benefit from this. So this is a option to use if you're soloing. It will not benefit your party members because it is a self buff. And I don't know the damage value of the Dragon Hatchet. This might hit a little bit stronger. So this could be a viable option if you just need that extra little hit chance. So now moving into the things that I did actually test. The Dragon Halberd, this didn't change too much, it just became something that is not clunky to use. So it no longer has a cooldown, it used to have a 3 second cooldown, so now it is spammable so long as you have the adrenaline for it. It will not randomly change targets, which was one of the most tedious things to deal with, and it will always hit your targets twice as opposed to sometimes hitting once or sometimes hitting twice on certain targets. So now it will always hit twice, which is great. The other thing with the Dragon Halberd, and this has always been the case, is that it hits in a cone in front of you, so it doesn't hit beside or behind you. So this is where the Dragon 2H kind of has some strengths over the Halberd, because it will hit all around you. And it used to just be a 3x3 radius, but now it is a 5x5 radius by default. And with a Scythe or a Halberd type weapon, this goes up to 7x7, from what I've been told. If anybody has any confirmation on that, that would be greatly appreciated. So before I move into the more viable EOF adrenaline dump specs, quick note is that the Dragon Dagger, the Dragon Halberd, and the Dragon Claws, this is a solid change, is that they're no longer channeled abilities. A channeled ability is a ability that will have multiple hits over a designated period of time. So think of Assault or Destroy. A channeled ability with melee does not fully benefit from Chaos Roar. 
Chaos Roar will double the damage of your next melee damaging ability. And if it's a channeled ability, instead of benefiting all four hits of assault, it will only benefit the first hit and the last three will be the same as they were without Chaos Roar. So Dragon Claws, Dragon Halberd, Dragon Dagger all have multiple hits and they were considered channeled abilities. So only the first hit was affected by Chaos Roar. But now that has changed. So every single hit of these abilities will be affected by Chaos Roar. Dragon Claws, even though it has a bit of a damage increase, the damage falls off very quick as it always has. I would say Chaos Roar is still best to be used with Easy K, but if you don't have the Easy K, then obviously you'd want to use it on something else. I still don't think that would be Dragon Claws because now you have the option of Dragon Dagger and Dragon Longsword. Personally, I think Dragon Longsword is the best one to use, but before we go into that, Dragon Dagger is pretty cool because it is a quick two hits similar to Hurricane. And within my experience, it was easily hitting almost 20K between those two hits without being Chaos Roared. And with Chaos Roar, it would double that damage, of course. Dragon Longsword is a single hit that hits up to 410% ability damage and it has a race hit cap. So this, in my opinion, is probably your brand new EOF spec Adrenaline Dump. Not only does it hit super hard, but it costs half as much as Dragon Claws. So it's a lot more spammable and it's a lot more realistic to fit into your rotation. Dragon Claws ran into the issue of costing way too much adrenaline when it comes to using it in an actual boss encounter. In my experience, I was barely ever using it, but Dragon Longsword, there's plenty of times where I have leftover adrenaline, Limitless may be on cooldown, and I have some thresholds off cooldown, but I'm not over 50% adrenaline, but say I have 30% adrenaline, Dragon Longsword is viable to use because with the Ring of Vigor, it only costs 22.5% adrenaline. With the raised hit cap, all buffs on your target, it can hit up to 32,000 damage, which is a massive chunk of damage. Regularly, I was hitting anywhere between 13 to 17K and without critting in Zerk, you can hit up to 20K, which is just bananas. It's absolutely bananas. This is a very fun weapon spec to use. So all in all, to give a TLDR and wrap up to this video, if you are looking for a new EOF spec, to use for adrenaline dumping, change it to the Dragon Longsword. It will make it more realistic to use because you will regularly have that amount of adrenaline to use within your rotation. And if you are looking for cleave, a Dragon Halberd is a great option, but if you struggle with positioning, maybe the Dragon 2H Sword is better for you. If you need a little bit of an accuracy buff, I would personally still go with the Dragon Hatchet because the effect between the Dragon Hatchet and the Dragon Scimitar, I don't know the numerical values, I feel like they'd be pretty similar. And the Dragon Hatchet not only benefits you but it benefits all of your group if you are running with the group and that's all i have for you today guys i really hope that you enjoyed this new video going over the brand new updates to the dragon weapon specs this is something that i have been wanting for a long time i had no idea that they were really even working on this so i was very surprised by this and it's cool because it brings back a little bit of nostalgia back when i was first unlocking my dragon dagger or my dragon scimitar i was so excited for these back before eoc they are such strong weapons, and now I feel like they've been modernized to fit well within the current state of evolution of combat. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on the video, drop a comment down below letting me know your thoughts, and feel free to correct me on any of the information that I went over in this video. Let me know how the weapon specs have treated you and what content you've tried it on. Check out the video description for links to my Discord where you can get notified of any new video releases and any new live streams. And also follow me over on Twitch where I'll record a bunch of my progress for all of my RuneScape 3 series content. And it's just a good place to hang out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Rayo and I'll see you next time. Take care.